Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, so uh, uh, I'm giving the talk on the detection of internal waste in the Bay of Bengal using salinity. Uh, so I'm Subra uh, Subramanian Bulusu, Subra Bulusu. I'm heading the Satellite Oceanography Laboratory at the University of South Carolina. Uh, so I would like to acknowledge uh, Dr. V.S.N. Murthy from uh, NIO India and my PhD student, Sarah Hall, um, uh, you know, collaborating on this work. Uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, the funding from the OINR um, on the Bay of Bengal. Um, so the motivation of this work is, uh, you know, we know that the internal waves have been identified globally uh, and also in the Bay of Bengal and the Andaman Sea uh, using sea surface height and satellite imagery from ocean color and also uh, uh, using the synthetic aperture radar. So. And, but the problem is a uh, little work has done in the characterizing internal waves in the Indian Ocean using models. Um, and also the freshwater fluxes within the <clears throat> upper water uh, column play a significant role. Uh, so the salinity is important to, to understand the dynamics and also to uh, um, internal wave energy, momentum transported and also their breakdown. Um, so, uh, a need to address the stratification weighing to salinity associated with the large quantity of freshwater flow, uh, like in the Bay of Bengal. Uh, so, uh, but the, the problem is that are not, uh, you know, uh, well understood, uh, and also we don't have a lot of, uh, not many studies uh, using salinity, you know, itself. So recently, you know, NASA released the ECHO project uh, that is uh, 148 degree MIT model simulation. Um, uh, so th those are able to detect the internal waves, uh, uh, in internal waves. So uh, I, I see, I show here the figure showing the Bay of Bengal with major rivers. Um, so, uh, in during the monsoon time, either northeast monsoon or southwest monsoon time, we see the, a lot of fresh water coming from the uh, all these rivers, especially in the northern Bay of Bengal uh, through the Andaman Sea. So here you can see the you know, both monsoon, especially in the northeast monsoon, you see the more fresh water you know coming from the Bay of Bengal. Um, so that affects the internal waves both in the Bay of Bengal also in the Andaman Sea. So recently, um, we have the salinity emissions from SMOS and Aquarius and also SMAP. Uh, so we can use to understand the role of these freshwater fluxes on the internal waves. Um, so uh, just in general, uh, so internal waves occur globally in stably stratified fluids by fluctuating vertical distribution of density. So it makes temperature and salinity as the vital components. So the generation mechanisms are barotropic tides, uh, interact with steep and shallow, uh, shallow bathymetry and generate sentinel waves, um, and also in, interact with the, you know, uh, interact, uh, interact in breaking or sloping boundaries. So typically you look at the amplitudes uh, greater than 50 meters, and also you see the strong, you know, vertical mixing. So sometimes we see in groups of 40 uh, minutes between first wave of each packet. So compared to the you know, surface waves, uh, you know, so the internal waves uh, you know, uh, are uh, requires less energy and have higher amplitudes and extends uh, tens of kilometers, periods of minutes to hours. So in here in this study, you know, we filtered the you know salinity data based on the uh, you know internal wave periods because internal wave periods are between initial period, which is two pi over f, where f is a Coriolis parameter, and the local buoyancy period two pi over n, and is a buoyancy frequency. Um, so, uh, so before uh, we studied uh, using echo estimates, we used a you know ICOM that is hybrid coordinate ocean model with tides. Here you can see uh, during January, you know, April, and July 2005, we saw the internal wave generation in the Andaman Sea, and they propagate the uh, northward branch goes towards Vishakhapatnam here, and also one branch goes towards uh, Sri Lanka, and another branch goes towards the you know equatorial region. So based on this uh, you know initial work, uh, we identified three. Uh, six boxes, uh, A, B, C, 
uh, in the south, south, southern Bay of Bengal and DEF in the northern Bay of Bengal. So here also, I want to point out on the left-hand side, uh, in the NMNC, you have the 10 degree channel and also the you know, six degree channel. These do, two channels play a major role in the internal wave propagation. Uh, so he, quickly, uh, the echo estimates are based on 148 degree. So un uh, unfortunately, we have only one year data now, uh, to show here. Um, and also we use NASA uh, uh, SNAP salinity and also other you know, satellite missions of SMOS and Aquarius. And also we used uh, Rama moorings uh, and uh, the uh, NIOT boys uh, in this region and also provided by the NCOIS, uh, you know, uh, these mooring data. Uh, so for the methodology, we use the but, uh, Butterworth uh, high fast filter. So we use it two filters. So one is uh, you know 51 hour for boxes the A to C uh, in the southern Bay of Bengal, and uh, you know 39 hours in the uh, in the northern Bay of Bengal boxes D and F based on the inertial frequency. So here you can see in the figure now. Uh, you know, this is the raw, top one is the raw echo salinity and the bottom uh, filtered uh, salinity high pass filtered. So whenever you have the, you know, low salinity waters, you can see the, you know, high frequency are, I would say, uh, stronger internal waves, um, you know, in the top and the bottom in the, you know, brown color, you see when you have the high, uh, high salinity waters, uh, you see the you know, not much strong uh, signal, uh, internal wave signal. Uh, so before we did this work, we also uh, um, uh, compared the echo estimates with Rama moorings. You can see Rama moorings at 50 knots, 12 knots, 8 knots, and uh, you can see there is a good comparison, but there is also in Rama moorings, you will see a lot of uh, fluctuations, uh, you know, uh, you see, but overall, both uh, you know, agrees well. The bottom panel shows the comparison at the 12 north uh, echo and the Rama mooring. Um, so, and also salinity gradients will help us. So you can calculate either model simulations or you can also use uh, you know, sa satellite uh, data. And uh, these uh, you know, salinity gradients will help us to see the you know, internal waste troughs and crests. So here, one example I'm showing here you know, how to do that. Um, so, so we also compared all these boxes, A, B, C, D, E, F, and, uh, you know, you compare, uh, you filter uh, A, B, C with 51 hours and 39 hours, then you can see, you know, uh, in the Northern Bay of Bengal, you see the stronger internal wave uh, where you have the freshwater flux uh, is, uh, you know, coming from the various rivers uh, rather than the, you know, in the, uh, in the northern, um, uh, in the uh, in the southern side, um, and also you can see here the spatial variation of filtered SSS. Uh, so what we did here, number twelve and the top pan, uh, you can see every six hourly data we plotted uh, after the filtering. So you can see the positive ones are you know divergence and negative convergence. So, so this will help us to understand the propagation of the internal waves. So you see the bands of positive and negative, you know, uh, sea surface differences with patterns are similar to 12 hour differences. So if you look at the A and C and also, you know, E and D, uh, you can see, you know, the propagation signal, you know, of these internal waves. So ex every six hour leap, you know, you can see, uh, you know, divergence and convergence in the same place that will tell these internal waves are, you know, moving uh, in that direction. And also we did the, you know, pick the you know, maximum amplitude internal waves and minimum amplitude. Uh, for example, in the box A, you can see on November 11th and April 6th, you know, those are the days we picked up where we have the stronger, you know, signal. Uh, so both are showing uh, in the, this, this one is in the uh, Andaman uh, uh, area. Uh, so in generate, uh, so you can see uh, here uh, the uh, generating the region of the internal waves. Um, so box B, this is at the 10 degrees channel. 
uh, which selected February 2nd and December 2nd, where you got the highest maximum uh, amplitude and minimum amplitude. Uh, so as I mentioned to you, this 10 degree channel also play a major role uh, for this internal wave propagation from undermanned sea to, you know, to either southwards or northwards. Um, and then you can also see the bottom box C, uh, number 26, um, you know, on the same day, but different time periods. So here, you know, it is showing the uh, diurnal period of the internal waves. Um, so you can see very strong signal, both in the minimum amplitude and also back maximum amplitude. Um, so the 2D FFT will help us to understand the, you know, internal waves, uh, um, whether they are propagating northward, uh, southward, or eastward, westward. So the zonal wave number will tell you, you know, east-west propagation, and uh, meridional number tells you northward, north, north southward propagation. So I'm going from, you know, uh, right to left, so box A, B, C, so where the propagation generated here and propagated, and also the same thing, A, B, C. Uh, in the you know bottom uh, panel in the meridional, uh, so if I pick the you know, the strong uh, you know signal, and if we calculate the uh, direction uh, with the wave number uh, and frequency, and you can see here box A is the generating region in the NMN C, so that is uh, you know uh, highest you know phase speeds, and also internal wave period is 36 and 40. But when it goes to be, um, you know, closely, uh, slowly, the, the uh, speed decreases. But when it reaches the off Sri Lanka region, again, the internal wave speed increases. Uh, so that tells you the propagation speeds so from Andaman Sea towards the Sri Lanka region or the East Coast. You can calculate based on that. And also the wavelet transforms will help us to understand the period and the wave power. Uh, so here I'm showing again boxes A, B, C, and I'm concentrating on the lower panel. You can see here uh, box A <clears throat> that is in G. It is showing the diurnal tide is dominated here. And in box B, diurnal tide is still there, but it is not uh, you know, uh, diminished energy you know, when it is passing through the 10 degree channel. Uh, but box C, you can see here, when I am showing, you know, diurnal tide is there, highly dominated, and also you can see the internal wave propagating, uh, other you know, frequencies of internal waves are also propagating in box C. Um, so um, we also did the work uh, to see, because most of the work we showed here until now, only at the surface using the echo estimates of, you know, but uh, uh, using the boy an IOT boy at the uh, BD12, you can see in different depths, the 10 meters to 200 meters depth, uh, that is different colors. So what we have seen, uh, diurnal internal, internal waves have dominated wave power at 50 meters depth. That is, uh, you know, the uh, this uh, this color you can see here, um, and also decreases uh, towards the surface, and also decreases towards the deeper depths. Um, so what we did was to see the other frequencies here. Uh, so we zoomed up, uh, you know, zero to 1.5. Then you can see here very well uh, the, uh, which suggests the diurnal internal waves are generated at the salinity induced cyclocline and pop propagate upward and downward. That's what you are seeing here. And also low frequency internal waves of the year between 26 to 51 hours are also generated at the salinity induced the picnic line, but have lesser wave power. That's what you are seeing here. So in summary, uh, presence of internal waves is detected in the Andaman Sea in the Bay of Bengal first time um, in uh, sal and, uh, sea surface salinity from echo estimates. Um, propagation of uh, low frequency internal waves uh, is um, revealed from the wave number and frequency domain and the continuous uh, uh, wave power spectra reveals the presence of the internal waves of internal tidal periods. And uh, spatial variation of SSS uh, on the days of higher or lesser amplitudes indicate the source region of the internal wave generation. For example, in the you know, NMNC, like in Botsia. 
So we also saw diminishing internal wave energy when they're passing through the 10 degree channel and uh, internal wave amplification is seen uh, when near a half of the uh, half the Sri Lanka due to the local stratification. So the important point here you see you know, from Andamancy when the internal waves are passing, uh, now A to C, then slowly uh, you know, at 10 degree channels, they lose the energy, but again, they will increase the uh, you know, uh, speed uh, at local stratification in the box C. Uh, so that's all my talk. Uh, any questions, I will be happy to take. Thank you for this uh, interesting talk. So if there's any question, we can, uh, can be eyes on the chat or uh, and there's a question on the chat. I don't know if you can read. Uh, I can't see the chat from here. Uh, I can read. The first question is uh, from Jitendra. What is the spatial resolution of the SSS? Okay, so we are using ECHOS uh, estimates. Those are uh, 148 degree, almost uh, two kilometers, uh, 2.3 kilometers. Okay, and there is a second question by uh, Siva Eron Pedada. Sorry for the uh, sorry, the name. So the question is: Do near inertial waves have uh, surface signa signatures too? Yes, yes. So you can see those uh, near inertial waves have also surface signature. Uh, that's what you are seeing. If, you know. Uh, and the boy uh, BD12, I was showing the last one you can see there. Yeah. Okay. Is there any other question? Uh, I, I have a question that uh, it's not, I'm not a, a specialist. Uh, in in one of the direction of the internal wave in the in the map, I think in slide five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, right. It seems you have waves going uh, toward India. There right. is no reflection of waves from this the coast of India coming back right. to the field. No, it, there is no reflection back there, but they spread around the you know coastal regions. So you can see along the east coast of India, you can see the spread. Um, you know, so the generation region is here, so they go here or they come uh, towards Sri Lanka region or they go towards the, you know, Iqtol region like that. Yeah. Okay. Right. right. Uh, and there is, a, there is another question. Yes. Is it, possible to est is it possible to estimate the amplitude of internal waves uh, on surface level with this method? Yes. So you can do that. That's what uh, we were showing. You could use either Fourier transformations or also you can see these are all at the surface I'm showing. Uh, you can use the wavelets or you can also use the fast Fourier transformations like that. I hope I answered that question. Um, would you method is suitable to track the high frequency internal waves uh, less than two hours with uh, higher resolution SSS measurements? The, unfortunately, the problem is uh, the SSS the satellites measurements uh, are uh, right now the SMAP daily, but the resolution is not uh, enough to see the internal waves uh, because the SMAP has a thousand kilometers so, you know, swapped but that is not enough. So you need to very high resolution. Uh, and also you need uh, you know, hourly data, but the SMAP you can get to only you know, eight day and you can get the running mean to daily, but still you, you need hourly data. So that's a big problem uh, to get from the satellite measurements, but you can see from the buoy data or Rama morning, you can get that. Okay. Yeah, great. Thank you. There any other question? It's on the chat or you can switch your microphone on. So I think there is no other question. Uh, so we can thank uh, Subha again.